I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. I like to talk about what I call future classics. And you say, well, Tone, what, well, future classic, how could you possibly predict the future? And I say, you know what, you're absolutely right. I am, first off, an idiot. But secondly, uh, I'm an idiot that might have been around for a little while, hence the age, right? I've seen these cars come and go uh, when we should have said, oh, man, I should have bought this car. Oh, man, I should have bought this car. And uh, guess what? We missed them from silly things like we all know, which are like maybe a GT500 KR or a Shelby Cobra to uh, modern day stuff like uh, Grand Nationals and, uh, well, I shouldn't say modern, that's not really modern, that's semi-modern, right? That's a 17 digit VIN cars. Uh, but in the world of uh, sports and exotic cars, this right here I feel is one of those cars, I'm gonna tell you why. First off, this car makes a sound that no other car makes. A Maserati, I don't know what they do. It's compression, it's firing order, it's all of those things wrapped up in there. You're getting 400 horsepower out of 4.2 liters with no turbos, no forced induction, no nothing. Just a beautifully driving car. Secondly, it's a six-speed dual-mode transmission, which some people say, oh, I'm not sure I like that. Other people are like, wow, I'm on the wow side. I'm going to tell you why, because the people on the other side don't know how to drive it. So here's the deal. This car actually has a clutch in it, but no shifter and whatever. And you're saying to yourself, well, how could a big sedan like this have a beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, interior and all that and still be a manual too? And like, yes, here's what happens. So instead of uh, you having to move the shifter, it's automated for you just like all modern cars are today, right? Single clutch and dual clutch transmissions. The difference here is that when you go to shift it, right, if you want to, because it can be in automatic mode or manual mode. But when you go to shift it and you pull the paddle, most people just stay on the gas. Well, if you own a manual transmission car, you wouldn't stay on the gas in between shifts because the car would, would rev and you let off the gas, make your shift and put the gas back on. The same is here is what makes this car so great is when you pull the paddle, lift your foot up for that brief moment and put your foot right back down. It is so cool. It's so fun to engage in the car, not to mention it handles so beautifully. All right. Uh, so that's a quick uh, infomercial on the transmission of these cars because they they engage you and they drive. When this car is in sport mode, the exhaust is open, the suspension is firmed up, the electronics are sharper, right? Uh, the transmission is quicker, like all of these things are going on uh, when you push that sport button. And it is a spectacular sound. You're gonna hear us outside do that for you. It's a great demo. It's one of my favorite things. I love these cars. You can tell by how much I'm rambling, I'm smiling, whatever. Uh, and I know that these cars here with low miles, great colors and a GT model. First off, it was $133,000 back in 2006. That's like, uh, for, uh, I'd probably need to do the math somewhere with inflation and what have you, is at the 180 mark. They're selling for the same price, new today, 2024 is $133,000. So this was a really expensive car for its time, right? All right, so lastly, uh, we're gonna get into some paint. We're gonna into interior, under the hood. We're gonna take a walk around. We're gonna go for the drive, and I'm gonna show you how the dual mode transmission works on the test drive, so we can put that all behind you and find a way to get this in your garage. All right, so uh, there's many times people will say, hey, Tone, that is a great looking car, but we don't really know why it's a great looking car, right? So let me point out some things that make uh, the effort that goes into cars great looking, right? For instance, the way this here is not just a flat fender, right? It's curved into here. This is a wrap. So this is carbon fiber wrap on top of this beautiful silver paint on top of a clear bra as well, right? And so uh, if you don't like that, this comes off and the beautiful silver paint is right below. So you don't have to have this on the roof, the trunk or whatever. It's just a styling touch that the previous owner who I know well uh, decided to put on the car. And uh, it can stay on if you like. If you don't like it, it brings it back to the stock original car that it was. All right, next, uh, these vents on the side. That's why it's called a Quattroporte because it originally had uh, multiple vents there. And that's a styling trend that they put in here. I love this turn signal in here. It's LED, it looks really good. And who designed the car? Nobody else, but they put their signature on the side and that's Pininfarina. Big, break, big red brakes inside there, huge cross drilled. Uh, reinvented rotors, right? Because you're talking about a very fast car, 400 plus horsepower. Uh, these cars were the fastest four-door sedan, I believe, during their time. Don't quote me on that because there was a lot of four-door four sedans at the time. There's Bentleys were out with 500 to 550 horsepower, depending on whether it's a speed addition or not, um, up to 600 horsepower. Anyway, there's so many cars to know so much about. It's hard to know everything about every car we built, but right now we don't care about those. We care about this because this right here makes a sound that the other cars do not. All right, so the styling is here. We found a beautiful car. Let's look under the hood because... 
All right, so where do we get this great sound of these cars? Nobody ever says, oh, that Maserati sounds terrible. The first thing people say when you say, oh, I have a Maserati, like, oh my God, it sounds amazing, right? Why? All right, let's get into that for a minute. Look at these valve covers. That's not the sound, but I just want to show you the detail that Italians do everywhere, right? Everywhere from these great design here to under the hood to the trunk that's even beautiful. These red cam covers here, uh, the black painted uh, and powder coated uh, intake manifold there, um, all of the different colors in here. Now, when I'm buying a car, there's a couple of things I'm looking for first. What are those things, right? So they are this, like this assembly tag is still in place. The original factory tag for the paint color is right there. Uh, emissions and those kinds of things are all in the same place. Why is that important? Well, because if this car was in an accident, okay, uh, they would replace these parts on the car and they wouldn't really care about getting these decals. And on top of it, you can't buy them anymore either. So we know that they're original, we know that they're real, and that's the great thing about getting a low mileage car. Second, why do these cars handle so well? Let's talk about that for a second. What you don't know is that this is a mid-engine sedan. You say, Tone, come on, mid-engine sedan, where is it, in the back seat? You're like, no, not in the back seat, it's not in the back seat, but thank you for asking, all right? What it means is this, is that the center line, here is the center of the wheel. Most cars, the engine sits right over here, right over the center line of the wheel. This engine here, is slid back. All of this right here is for styling only, okay? And the engine is here. And you can see it's actually behind the center line of the wheel. That's why this car handles so well because all the weight of the engine isn't sitting on top of the front wheels, all right? Another great feature of it. And this is rear wheel drive. And, it, uh, and when you kick it, it kicks it. All right, so you're walking up to your car and you go, man, that is a great looking car. Uh, and not to mention, is it a great looking car, but the style is held up. It's almost 20 years later we're doing this video and this car still looks so good outside. Matter of fact, these are becoming more popular than the next version because the original styling was right the first time. All right, let's, so let's get in and see what, uh, what this Quattroporte uh, is giving us as far as uh, the luxury and convenience of an Italian car, right? So for instance, the dash is beautiful for a couple reasons. One, this is a GT model, right? So it's a sport GT. So it has the carbon fiber inside here, that trim, all right? Second, uh, having blue faced gauges. Like who puts blue faced gauges in a car? Maserati does. 9,000 RPM TAC, 200 mile an hour speedometer, right? The, this original style uh, vintage uh, clock from back in the day, when they were in their original sports cars, whether they were uh, maybe the original Quattroportes or some of those other uh, models there. Uh, climate control, radio, everything sourced right inside here. It's full modern, full working, uh, all the stability, traction, airbags, all that good stuff that you could possibly want. Alcantara headliner and interior which is just super, super nice looking. I mean, it, these are the touches that I'm talking about. Two-tone door panels, right? With uh, carbon fiber at the bottom here as well. Like if you order carbon on a car right now, it could be three to $10,000 for the carbon upgrade package. This model here came with that on it, all right? Showing just over 30,000 miles on it. We're talking about less than 2,000 miles a year this car was driven, 2,000 miles a year. And that's why I want to spend some time in here so you could see uh, the black piping that's in the seats here and the stitching that matches the outside paint color, like all of this little detail stuff back to my original statement. Well, Tone, that's a great looking car, but we don't know why. And here uh, we can clearly see that. Lastly, uh, it has what I say is the best feature of the car, and that is the two modes you can drive. You can either put it in drive, okay? It's in drive right now, or uh, you can go ahead and turn it into manual. And you have up and down paddles with little uh, pieces of of uh, Alcantara on the back to keep your fingertips dry while you're driving it, which is kind of cool. And you can shift the car, man. And it's a real manual transmission car. When you go to shift, you do this. A let up, put back down. Pull the shifter, let up, put back down. All of that makes it super smooth and, and, and great when you're driving. People just don't understand. Sometimes when they're pulling the shifter and they have the, and the gas halfway down where well, the car has to shift. So it has to uh, slow down for just a microsecond. And people don't love that microsecond, whatever. That's why I love the engagement because it allows you to lift up all the gas, shift it, and now I'm driving the car, right? Push a sport mode there, and it is a game changer for sound, engine management, uh, suspension, everything. It is may be a small little button, but it's a huge impact. All right, so I want to take a second to come back here because uh, they've given us some thought. And I want to show you some little things. For instance, they cut out the back of the seats for people who are tall. 
right? Little things. Uh, this also has uh, power seats in the rear. A lot of people don't know that. This has a sunshade in the back that lowers down. All these headrests are not cheaply embossed into the leather. This is a relief. What that means is it's done from the inside out. So it's raised and you can feel it. You can see uh, the piping here and the stitching around. Carbon back here, climate control. Um, it really is designed to be an executive's car if you want to do, but could also be an executive sports car. And I sit back here and I go, wow, this is some kind of really nice. And then it has a, uh, a pass through uh, there in the back. I forget how to block them, but anyway, you don't need to see me do all that. In case you want to put your skis in here. Uh, and I don't know, I'm just feel like so comfortable right now. I don't want to leave. <laughs> all right, uh, let's get out of here and talk about the rest. All right, so we move back here. Not that you're buying a car for the back of the car, but this is part of the styling that makes it so great, right? This Maserati emblem is, is from the 50s, maybe it's the 40s. I don't remember exactly when it's from, but it's an old school emblem that still looks great. The font continues to carry on, right? This great sounding exhaust, uh, parking sensors, backup camera, like all that good stuff, modern stuff is here, right? You're still getting an Italian sports sedan. And then inside here, they've made the trunk functional too, so that you can you can use this thing to, for weekend getaways. You can go golfing with it. You can do whatever you want uh, as far as a real world sports sedan goes. Some sports sedans, uh, maybe like the freshest version of the Ferrari Puro Sang, might not have as much room in the trunk here, all right? Uh, here we have storage underneath, right? Um, in case you want to put a full size spare in there, this is uh, uh, because they have 20 inch tires. Uh, most of them are compact spares or inflators, all right? And then they have uh, all this room in here. They have cutouts for the uh, golf clubs on the side. They like to share that and tout that up front. And they have tie down hooks too, in case you want to uh, keep stuff from moving around. And if you decide to get in the trunk, you can always get out. All right, so we talked about this car in detail, a lot of the things. Uh, but I want to go back to my original statement about being a future classic, right? And, and how could I possibly know that? You're right. I couldn't possibly predict the future. Uh, however, I can say that this has all of the things that could make it that way. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. It's low mileage, right? It's uh, low production, right? There weren't a lot of these sold. We're talking about 2006 with a $113,000 window sticker. It was an expensive car. Uh, and the new 2024, I don't believe, is a whole lot more than that, right? which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Big brakes, big engine, an exhaust note that's unmatched by any other car out there, especially in a sedan. Like the AMGs are great. They are awesome, not knocking them at all, but this car makes a sound that nobody else has replaced yet. Big red calipers hanging through. All of the styling that we talked about, uh, and I know the interior was spectacular when we were in there. Anyway, uh, I feel like at the end of the day, what a cool car that you can drive and hopefully will continue to go up in value. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this Sport GT Quattroporte. And uh, if you don't mind, hit the like button down below. That helps us get the message out. Really appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We have new stuff coming out every day. Um, and if you don't mind, share it with your friends. I think they would like... Okay, a sports sedan like no other sports sedan. Let's go for a drive. This beautiful windy road. And like, how is it possible that this big car uh, goes around the corner like that? Well, only Maserati can do it. And here we are. I didn't want to take you on a highway ride. I wanted to take you on a back road ride because not many sedans allow you to engage them. That's only 4,000 RPMs that I'm at. Red line is 7,500 and it makes a sound <laughs> that's so good. I'm laughing because it sounds so good. I'm using the shifters uh, because I'm enjoying driving. I'm going for a ride in the country in the car and not just sitting in the car, I'm going for a ride. Downshifted here, blip the throttle, blip the throttle here. Big brakes. It's 
so nice. This is such a great car, man. This is such... <sighs> You'll love this thing. You'll love it. And then if we're, if we're busy, hold on. Okay. Now if we want to put it in drive, we can do that as well if we want. All right, so we're not gonna put it in drive. Okay, take 10. All right, here we go. We're going for a drive on the country roads. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive. And now it's in drive. And it just drives. I can even put it, take it off sport mode. And the suspension's soft now. Nice. Comfy, right? And I'm just going for a drive. I don't have to use the paddles get on the phone, do my thing. Still makes such a great sound from inside here. Here's a nice shift, it was nice and easy. 